Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. 10 Most Expensive Mistakes in All of History Mistakes have happened throughout human civilizations. Some of these mishaps are so minimal that no one ends up noticing but those directly affected. However, some mistakes are monumentous with far-reaching effects that have led to the loss of human life and economic ruin, making them very expensive. Some occur due to human error, while others are tied to structural design flaws and failure to recognize these defects, attributing to many disasters that have occurred. With that said, here are 10 most expensive mistakes in history. Number 10. Songzhu Bridge Collapse If this isn't part of a terrible nightmare, I can't imagine what the people who experienced this in real life felt like. 48 meters of the central region of the Xiangzhu Bridge collapsed suddenly on October 21st, 1994. The bridge across the Han River to Seoul, the capital city of Korea. The collapse plunged a commuter urban bus and six passenger cars driving down the bridge into the river about 20 meters below one after another. Zhangzhou Bridge is one part of the arterial road that connects the residential section and city center in the south of Seoul City with a lot of traffic volume, so you could imagine how many lives were at risk. Its construction work was started in April 1977 and completed in October of 1979. Improper welding of the 672-meter steel truss digit division resulted in the structural failure. It was cracked on this truss that investigators later pointed out as the cause of the collapse, claiming 32 lives and causing severe injuries to others. The bridge was to be repaired, but the weakness in the structure had to be redesigned and rebuilt. The new bridge was completed in 1997. Before we move on, I've got a little challenge for you that'll take 5 seconds to complete. So here's the deal, you just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 25 years of amazing luck. Try it, it really works! Number 9. Lake Pinyur Salt Mine Drilling Accident On the morning of November 20th, 1980, on Louisiana's Lake Pinyur, 12 men on a Texaco oil rig team couldn't free the drill seized up below the surface. What followed was a series of loud pops. Their platform began to tilt toward the water. Alarmed, the men evacuated ashore and watched their 5,150-foot-high derrick vanish into the lake. Diamond crystal salt mine tunnels run under the lake. 50 miners escaped when the Texaco drilling team accidentally punched their main shaft. The oil men watched in shock as the lake turned into a swirling vortex, forming a whirlpool and sucking everything near, including Jefferson Island, into it. The backward flow created a temporary waterfall with geysers bursting periodically from the bed of the flooded shafts. Texaco agreed to pay $45 million to the owners of the mine and other flooded local businesses. Why was Texaco drilling for oil directly above an active salt mine? Didn't they know? They did! The Texaco drilling team was at the wrong spot because of a mapping mistake. It turned out the engineer mistook transverse Mercator projection coordinates for UTM coordinates. Geography matters! Number 8. France's Fat Trains The French train operator SNCF in 2014 discovered that 2,000 new trains it ordered at a cost of more than $20 billion were too wide for many of its regional platforms. This mistake has so far cost the rail operator $70 million and over $100 million in damage control. Rail network operator Rosé Ferré du France RFF, measured platforms for the expansion of the rail services, but forgot other platforms in the south built 50 years ago weren't wide enough to accommodate the dimensions. RFF passed on this measurement to SNCF, who relayed this to the manufacturer. This now has created a problem of having spacious and more comfortable coaches that can't fit on the thinner platforms, creating a need of expanding the platforms to accommodate the fat trains at additional costs that the government is distancing itself from funding. Did RFF do this on purpose so that they could have a way to upgrade the old stations? Or was it an honest, expensive mistake? What do you think? Number 7. Chernobyl Accident The events of April 25, 1986 still puzzle many. 
what really happened at Chernobyl and Kiev. During a periodic routine maintenance at the plant, sleep-deprived technicians wanted to find out if the reactor could still be cold in case the plant lost power. This, in violation of safety protocols, led to power surges inside the reactor, leaving the reactor core exposed, causing a blast. Radioactive material spewed in the atmosphere. Russia considered publicizing a nuclear accident was a significant political risk, but by then it was too late. Sweden reported a surge of radioactive readings in the area, which prompted Russia to issue a public report. Despite trying to hide the failure from the world, the sheer magnitude of the disaster soon called for a massive response force to be formed to help. Two days after the incident, the residents of Pripyat were evacuated, and a cleanup effort that would span for years following the disaster put many of the first responders, liquidators, in mortal danger. According to the International Atomic Energy Agency's report on Chernobyl, the total cost of the Chernobyl disaster runs over $235 billion, with a far-reaching effect in the quality of life in closed cities and survivors of the initial blast, making Chernobyl the worst nuclear disaster in history. Pripyat's town now is a radiated capsule. Everything growing in the surrounding area is forbidden fruit for the next 1,000 years. Number 6. Vaillant Dam Collapse Vaillant Dam, the center of Europe's worst incident of dam failure, stands at 262 meters high, located on the Vaillant River upstream of Longarone in the northeast of Italy. SAID constructed the dam for hydroelectric power generation as part of an extensive network of dams. When the incident happened, ownership had been transferred to ENEL, the National Agency of Electricity. When cracks began to appear along the Mount Talk Reservoir, a local newspaper published an article suggesting that landslides were recurrent near the dam site, increasing the likelihood of a disaster. This sparked a public outcry and legal action was taken against the newspaper. Disaster struck on the night of October 9, 1963. A storm surge of massive waves set off a landslide, which dropped tons of earth and overflowed the dam in an instant. 2,500 lives were washed away, several villages and towns destroyed, and 1,917 lost lives. The designer didn't understand the geology in the Valley Basin. They thought the reservoir was drawn down enough not to cause harm, but they grossly underestimated the resultant size of the rock slide. Warnings issued before the Voyant rock slide were largely ineffective. The flood occurred at night when many downstream residents were asleep. The outcome was more fatal than it would have been during the day. Number 5. Rain on the Spirit of Kansas B-2 Bomber Crash Who would think a little moisture can bring down a B-2 Spirit Bomber? The B-2 Spirit, a feat of engineering from its custom-designed engine and technologically advanced surface sensors, costing around $1.4 billion per plane, crashed on February 8, 2008 at Guam, Anderson Air Force Base. Maintenance personnel had noticed that air data calibration was required much more often in humid conditions. In 2006, a US-based Air Force engineer suggested turning on the heat before the calibration to boil off any water in the system before adjusting the sensors. No one had made a connection to the air data sensors, fed info to the Flight Control Center FCS, computers on airspeed, angle of attack, and side slip, and that the FCS flew the plane based on that data. The problem fix was, however, never officially documented in the B-2 Calibration Protocol Manifest, and not all pilots were aware of this fix, including the two who were flying the B-2 bomber on that fateful day. What led to the accident? The final report into the crash did determine that the crash was caused by moisture on the sensors, which caused the jet to receive inaccurate data in the FCS, blowing up the $1.4 billion bomber in flames just after taking off. Number 4. Blockbuster Lost Opportunities Netflix has become a household name, but not so long ago, blockbusters were the in thing. Reed Hastings, the founder of Netflix in 2000, proposed a partnership to Blockbuster CEO John Antioco and his team for Netflix to run Blockbuster's brand online, while Blockbuster would promote Netflix in its stores, an idea Blockbuster turned down. 
Blockbuster dominated the competition with thousands of retail locations and millions of customers. By 2010, with Netflix on the scene, Blockbuster went bankrupt and Netflix's worth rose to $28 billion, almost 10 times the worth of Blockbuster. Antioco proposed to discontinue the late rent fees that annoyed customers and invest heavily in a digital platform to ensure the brand's future. It was pointed out that the proposed changes would mean losing $200 million for late rent fees and another $200 million to launch Blockbuster Online, damaging overall profitability. Yet, for all his operational acumen, Blockbuster's CEO failed to see the opportunity that networks with unseen connections would bring about his downfall. Over the past years, much has now been understood on how these networks function and how his fate could have been avoided. Number 3. Most Costly Salute in History the Concordia, built at a cost of $570 million in 2006, was on an eight-day pleasure cruise around the Mediterranean ports on January 13, 2012, when disaster struck, about three hours from the port of Civitavecchia to its first port of call, Savona in northwestern Italy. The vessel struck rocks off of Giglio, creating a huge gash in its side. On board, there were 3,206 passengers, and 1,023 crew members, 30 of whom died and two could not be accounted for to date. Initial investigations picked out Captain Error for the tragedy. Concordia's captain, Francesco Chettino, deviated from the programmed course to pass closer to Giglio to salute the residents. The captain also failed to conduct emergency mustard drills for embarking passengers before leaving port, a factor in the passengers' response when disaster struck. Captain Chitino also went overboard before the completion of the rescue mission with a claim that he fell overboard into a lifeboat. So far, the costs have surpassed 1 billion euros, not including the 100 million euros cost for the ship to be broken up for scrap repairing damage to Giglio Island. And with that, it's now time for today's best pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber. So if you come across a photo online and want to know more details about it, just send it over to us. We might even feature it on a future video. Number 2. RENA Monrovia Cargo Ship Grounding This is the MV Rena, built in 1990. It was a 3,351 TEU container ship considered to be the largest ship ever lost in the New Zealand waters. While sailing from Napier to Taronga on the Wednesday of October 5, 2011 at 2.20 a.m., the Renarin aground on the Astrolabe Reef off the Bay of Plenty in New Zealand. The shipmaster changed the plotted navigation route to Mahaya Peninsula to be able to meet the set estimated arrival time at Taronga. With it, the ship, carrying 1,368 containers, 8 with hazardous materials, 200 tons of marine diesel, and 1,700 tons of heavy fuel oil. Oil from the arena began washing ashore at Mount Monganai Beach, leading to a 3.1-mile oil slick, threatening wildlife in the area's rich fishing waters. Bad weather caused the ship to shift on the reef, further resulting in 100 to 350 tons of oil leaking. By June 2014, the wreck salvage of approximately 77% of the initial containers was at a cost of $700 million. In the final report, the accident was attributed to the master and crew failure to follow proper voyage planning, navigation, and watchkeeping practices, and the captain's insufficient oversight of the vessel's safety management system, causing the grounding and subsequently the worst maritime environmental disaster in the history of New Zealand. Major pieces of the wreck have been removed. Sediment contaminant concentrations on Astrolabe Reef adjacent to the wreck indicate adverse effects on organisms. Number 1. Titanic Sink Maybe some of you would have guessed it, but the Titanic takes our number one spot. The Titanic, leaving Southampton to New York on the night of April 14, 1912, had a capacity of 3,500 passengers, though on this maiden voyage, fewer passengers, 2,224, were on board. The RMS Titanic, a marvel of handcrafted engineering for the time, was a British luxury ocean liner that struck an iceberg and sank, killing over 1,500 people on board. 
Nearby SS California didn't heed the SOS distress messages. Their assistance could have made an impact on the number of survivors, if not of all on board. The Carpathia came along one hour later to the rescue. To save space on deck and to enable passengers to not have an obtrusive view of the ocean, only 20 lifeboats of the 48 capacity were available, limiting the number of survivors who could have been rescued. To date, no one knows why Captain Edward Smith also canceled the lifeboat drill meant to perfect rescue operations before sailing. On a bizarre twist, the second captain was called off at the last moment of sailing, and the crew of the Titanic didn't have a key to the binoculars room, missing out on seeing the iceberg in good time. The Titanic had expensive furnishings, especially in the first class and casino. The total cost to build the Titanic was about 1.5 million pounds, or 7.5 million US dollars in 1912. Adjusted to the current value, that works out to roughly $179 million. Although more than 100 years have passed since the tragic event, the story and tragedy of the Titanic have captivated the public imagination ever since. People are still interested in the transatlantic liner maiden and last voyage. Can you believe that there's someone who survived the Titanic? It was also not the first time she was inside a sinking ship. Do you know her name? Leave it in the comment section down below.